All right. So first off, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Uh, first off, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the community. Yes, my name is Sanya, as you all know, and I'm a psychologist. I got started way back when I was in school. We got to choose our field elective and I chose psychology, mainly because I was curious what the course was, if it was what I thought it was. <laughs> and in that age, I think I was 16, 15, 16, I wanted to know uh, what, what do psychologists know? It sort of felt like they had a magic wand into people's minds and I was really curious to get in. And it started a long, long path of psychology. I studied a bachelor's in psychology three years in England. And then I've studied in Sweden and I've done some courses on top of that. And today I'm a registered psychologist. And yeah, I've never looked back and <laughs> the curiosity has not stopped. And I cannot say that I know any real magical secrets. However, I've learned the trick of the trade. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that, to share. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's great. Um... So like w were were any of like was anybody like psych psychologists before did you have like family members anybody that you sort of looked up to or I have family members I looked up to but no psychologist my mother is a or well she's not living anymore but when she lived she was a researcher she took a doctorate and my stepdad also research or researching professor so I know that the path of academia was for me so I knew that uh, I wanted to study and learn more things. And as my mom always said, a day where you learn something new is a day not wasted. So that has been <laughs> in the back of my mind all these years. Mm -hmm, that is that is words to live by, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if I can get get into this a little bit more, tell me a little bit about your work as a psych psychologist. What do you sort of do? Because like I've talked to a couple of psychologists and they work on different populations and different things. Yeah. That's really uh, normal. Psychology is a really uh, broad field. And as a psychologist, you really can work anywhere where, are, where there are behaviors, behaviors within humans, behaviors within animals. So as broad as you go. And I've been, I started my career in uh, psychiatry and I've been there for the last few years with adults, so 18 and above. Right now I'm working in a, spe a specialist psychiatry, which means that I'm working with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm working with uh, trauma, specifically post-traumatic stress compl complex tra trauma, and the all anxiety diagnosis. So um, kind of this is the area I'm working right now. Prior to this, I worked with uh, all the clinical diagnosis, as well as um, never, psychi never psychological, <laughs> psychiatric, it's a hard word, never psychiatrical investigations, so ADHD and autism and, so and such. Uh, it was really interesting. So I do a lot of... Um, assessments, treatment, education at the moment with adults. But I'm actually just shifting. I'm going to start working with, with children soon and their parents and more primary care. So early, early before it gets worse. Mm -hmm. as, as, <laughs> as you can hear, I've always been kind of greedy for knowledge. And um, I would love to continue trying many different areas of psychology and not only treatment. Right now I'm working with treatment, but I look to work more with education as well. And maybe even more organizational, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's good. So, as as an as a psychologist, you know, what sorts of uh, methods or approaches do you use for certain populations? Because, like you said, you work with adults, but now you're sort of transitioning to working with children, or want to transition to work with children. So, like, what what sorts of uh, methods do you use for those kinds of populations? Yeah. We say evidence-based material. This means that there is research behind it. And the, the method that I use is cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. And within, the, uh, within CBT, there's a lot of different methods, a lot of different treatments, and a lot of different... Uh, so it's very, very wide. And it's uh, up to me to make sure that I have that with, so that the, per the patient or the person who I meet uh, get the help they need, so I can adapt to their needs. That's always my motto. Mm -hmm. Did it answer your question? I'm sorry, were you going to finish your thought? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you didn't finish, uh, cut me off. I was wondering, did that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, it, it did. Yeah. Um, if we could move on, you know, what have patients told you about their experiences with like, 
like you said, because you work with um, people with anxiety and all this other stuff. So like, what have they told you, um, uh, like in terms of their experiences with mental health issues? Like, have they told you, I have this, this is, you know, been sort of, you know, been, um, been hard on me, you know, have you been, been able to get like those patient stories at all? Yeah, I think I like the word that you use the word story, because it is, really is that way. People have stories, narratives they come with. And uh, I, feel, I feel like a lot of the troubles oh, when you come to psychologists is this idea that, that my job is to look for what's wrong with you. And I think this is the old way of thinking of psychology, that they're, we're to look at what's wrong with you. Rather, I, t I tend to look at uh, what's, what's bothering you, you know? And I've noticed that a lot of people think that they're alone in this, because it's such a thing that doesn't necessarily show what's going on and people are really good at not talking about it, maybe hiding it, pretending like everything is fine when everything really isn't fine. Uh, so people sometimes get very surprised that there is a name to, to the disorder or the thing that's bothering them, that there is actually a specific name and that there are so many people with the same problem. Sometimes, well, actually often, I'll read up the statistics and I'll tell them, well, at, at this moment, 400,000 people in Sweden have this problem. <laughs> and they get really surprised, always with wide eyes, so this is something I often feel people mention to me, the feeling of being alone with their problems and the, the worry that somehow I'm going to tell them that they're different and that they are uniquely bad or somehow, when really that's not the case. They're just humans, just like me. Mm -hmm. uh, my next question is, what impact does this work have, not just on yourself, but, you know, the community as a whole? How could this psych psychology sort of, you know, help, you know, people, you know, find the help that they need because often I remember when we were during the we were all in the pandemic everything you know shut down we we were all having these sort of second thoughts about what job we want to pursue what what career we want to to um pursue and all that kind of stuff so like um that's kind of like my 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 main question I guess is what has psychology had it had an impact on you but not the greater community i'm not sure if i'm asking this right but yeah are you asking about uh, okay let me try to answer uh how has psychology has impact on me and the greater community i think it's very interesting when i look at uh, modern media i feel like psychology is very very hot topic people uh, like to uh, see that they've been doing cbt or that they've been doing therapy or that they like to analyze it's especially with all these reality shows, it's quite an uh, interesting topic. At the same time, a lot of people are seeking themselves to psychologists to get help. It's much more available in a new way. With internet, with the connectivity, we're able to meet a psychologist or online, like this, like where you and I speak. We could reach out. You don't have to be in the same city. You don't have to be in the same time zone even, but you can still talk and uh, perhaps find who you're looking for. Uh, so it, it creates a lot of different opportunities. At the same time, it can create a lot of a confusion. Um, when do I need a psychologist? What should I speak to psychologist to? Is it only when things are really, really bad? How does it work? So I think we're seeing people navigating in this and they're trying to figure out uh, how, how it works. Um, personally, how it's affected me is that it's uh, given me a lot of inspiration, how my colleagues work, um, that, that the information is a lot more readily available. I mean, if you would look back, I mean, psychology is quite young science. And if you look back how you would become a psychologist back in the days, it meant that you would have to be an apprentice to somebody who, who called himself psychologist and learn their specific ways. But as it is now, I can go in university and learn from a lot of different giants and then choose my way and discover who I am I as a psychologist, my personality specifically, and how can I help people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's different different types of psychology sports psychology, regular psychology, you name it. Um, Yeah. so it's, it's really, really wide and really broad, I guess. Um, my last question is what can upcoming psychologists, you know, learn from this? How can upcoming psychologists like yourself, you know, be prepared to uh, get into the psychology field and tackle patients with a variety of issues like anxiety, depression, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think uh, I, I held a speech to my uh, 
uh, the year under me when I was when I graduated, as well as the year above me, an inspirational speech of now they're going to start working and what's what's up ahead and what I would like to send them. So I think I'm going to uh, loan some of the thought that I had there. And that is that I wish that psychologists would dare to speak up because psychologists know a lot, a lot of uh, well evidence based knowledge. And at the moment, with the fast pace of how we communicate, sometimes and with this idea that we don't really know what's what, you know, we doubt facts. Uh, fact is fact. What is real? It's kind of really hard with AI <laughs> now with AI. So I wish a psychologist uh, could be trusted and also would trust themselves to speak up and actually put a light on the complexity of things. Because oftentimes it isn't so simple, it isn't black and white. It's a lot more of a nuance than that. And I think psychologists have a great deal in that. As well as psychology is, is a lot more than just therapy. It's a lot more. It could be how you build a community, how you build a city, how you should make sure the lighting is in a certain area to prevent crime. Or it could be how do we understand how we relate to animals or the, or the earth, the climate crisis. How do we ma manage this big change because we're having a hard time getting everybody to move along there. So it could be so much more than just therapy. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's, that's so true.